happy August, everyone. Can you even believe it's August already? Well, this has been quite a year. So I'm do a little quick garden video. Um, these, this is bronze fennel. I just love it. It makes a great filler. Um, it tastes like a, like licorice, like anise. Um, you can see the pollinators. Absolutely love this. Little tiny pollinators all over it. It gets quite tall. It's probably five feet. It never needs staking here anyways. And uh, these yellow flowers on top will turn into the seed heads, of course. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful. It looks good with blue flowers. And this very tall drink of water here. If you can see with the sun way up there, like that's got to be eight feet tall. This is uh, a philictrum. Uh, and it is called it is a variety called Splendide and those little flowers are great for bouquets little airy airy little flowers and uh, see if it'll focus on a, no, no, it won't. Um, they're also great dried the rabbits ate my um, hydrangeas all down to the ground so I had to chop them all off and uh, they, they have bounced back thank goodness the, look at the size of the blooms on this. Maybe it actually liked it. I think this is Pinky Winky. I'm not sure. I can't remember now. But uh, beautiful big blooms coming on. And this is the Calendula Strawberry Blonde. It's really beautiful. And of course I'm letting mine go to seed for the uh, seed crop. And this is, uh, I think this is Ann Culpa or Anna Culpa Hosta. It's got this really pretty variegated leaf if you can see in the sun here but the blooms are massive and they look really great in bouquets because you see this funky little top on it i was late getting my dahlias in for a lot of reasons but they're starting to come along now and they have been pinched off so um, if they weren't pinched they would probably be flowering by now but uh, they're coming this is some rutabecchia this is a basket flower you can see aptly named these seed this is about to bloom looks like a woven basket and there's one starting to open here they're very beautiful and then they great uh, dried and dried arrangements also rutabecchias are beautiful big, big big huge blooms this is one called prairie sun with the light center this lovely little clematis or clematis climbing up through the barberry looks very pretty. The Rutabecchia Sahara mixed in here. The bunnies have annihilated most of that row, but they are very pretty. And this is the Rubina banariensis, very airy, so I interplanted in this row. And this is scarlet kale, which has been here for I bet you three years. And so it's starting to flower again. And here are some seed pods. And there is an aphid infestation here that I keep waiting for the ladybugs to show up. So hopefully they show up soon. And this is the Rudbeckia Sahara. And some more dahlias. I have a fantastic sale on daylilies. Only $4.99 a division. Cheap, cheap, cheap. So I have posted on Facebook. So place your order and come and pick them up. This very shady spot under this massive, I call her the Mama Spruce, tree um there's a climbing hydrangea which seems to be managing in there in the shade and the very very dry so oh i think i even see some buds on there holy cow i'm excited so this is a black lace elderberry various hostas and some beautiful ferns and that is a pulmonaria and i have some calla lilies parked underneath here I've just picked a whole bunch of them, so there's not a whole lot to show in their blooming. And these lovely sedums. This beautiful color. I just love them. And this large tree, which someone insisted I plant, unfortunately. I love it, but hmm, it's going to get big too. So, anyways, hostas. Holy cow. More dahlias. That's a lovely little shady spot here, so I'm hoping there's going to be enough sun for these dahlias. My Bergmansia is beginning to bloom. And this is Sadie's horse bean. And it's starting to really get huge. It gets a little bit wilty because it's very, very hot right here. Um, but it does really, really well. And the dahlias I've got parked in front. I've even got some buds. 
This is the hummingbird salvia with all different colors. Last year I only had the coral colored one. And this year I'm going to hopefully be able to offer you this one, this beautiful rainbow of colors. It's just lovely. This one here is a uh, larkspur called Earl Grey, but you can see the salvia is blooming in the exact same color. So it's rather cool. And there's uh, the coral, little tiny bees. Oh my goodness, little tiny guy just landed on my hand. He's so full of pollen he won't get off. And here come the asters due to my plant sale. I'm a little bit behind planting things, but I'm, they're getting there. So this this is a uh, Valkyrie aster with all the, the, the quills. And this is um, the pink one, quite obviously. I've got some glads starting to bloom. The bells of Ireland. And here are this one over here. This is this one here is one I called Harmony. This is just starting to open, and it's a very beautiful color. Um, I hybridized this one from last year. This is the second year of tuber, and um, it is gorgeous. And last year I got seeds from this one. So these are a couple of I call that Harmony's babies. And the bees just love these open-faced ones. You can see this one is yellow with the very dark stems, if you can see in the sunshine. Not a good time to be taking a video, is it? But there's striping on the back, and it's a bright yellow, but it's got a pink tinge to it. And the petals are quite twisted. It's just beautiful. There's another one opening up there. So I've got a couple of others that I got from this cross, so I can't wait to see what they are. This is the other one with the striping on the back and a beautiful, they're quite large blooms. They're probably, oh gosh, at least four, four and a half inches across. Really lovely. The bees just love them. This one's quite large. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And the, the pink tinge is gorgeous. I'm really excited about these seedlings. This is apple mint with these lovely big fat leaves on it. And this is chocolate mint with the smaller leaves and the darker stems. My chrysanthemums are starting to bloom. Another china aster. This is the Valkyrie one again with the quills. Yellow, obviously. And this is Sorinth. And if you can see these beautiful bracts with these lovely flowers on the end and they turn quite blue. Um, and my one marigold that the rabbits haven't eaten. The basket flowers there starting to bloom. And this is Monarda lombata. And it smells lovely like a Monarda does. And it's just starting to bloom, which will go up the stem. I was wondering, looking at these little tiny seedlings, thinking, gosh, are they ever going to grow? And here they are. They're huge, and they're beginning to bloom now. So very excited about that. Coriander in bloom. The pollinators just, if you can see them all on here, just full of pollinators. And such a pretty flower. And then the seed pods. Oh gosh, look at all those pollinators on there. The seed pods are starting to form here. And these are the Lysianthus. That beautiful pink one. It's green. Beautiful white. They, they, they look like roses. They're gorgeous. And there's these purple. So pretty. Jimmy Nardello peppers. Great big long thin walled sweet peppers and the beautiful um, celosias. Just the colors of the leaves are just so gorgeous. Doe Hill peppers, here they come. There's nice golden globes in here. There's another one coming. You can see it. They're just small, but you get a lot of them and the, the flavor is seriously, oh my gosh. Once you have them, you'll be hooked. Beautiful daylilies. This one's called Big Kiss. And a friend of mine that gave this to me has now passed away, but every time I get plants uh, from someone, every time I look at it, I think of them. All different colors of Phlox paniculata. This is Lemon Verbena. More Rutabecchia. And this is Rutabecchia triloba. As you can see, it gets very tall. This is probably four feet anyways, four and a half feet. And it's full of little buds. It's starting to bloom down there. Very small, beautiful little um, little bracts with uh, sprays of flowers on that almost make a bouquet all by themselves. There's more Rutabecchia, Prairie Sun, some lovely daylilies. 
And there's an actual blooming dahlia back there. This is a sweet pepper that will turn red at maturity. This is uh, Amish pepper, Amish sweet pimiento peppers. Some lovely lemon basil. This is, stays light green, the stems and the leaves. It's lovely for bouquets and uh, delicious to eat great with chicken. The beautiful cinnamon basil. See the dark stems and the different colored leaf. Very beautiful once again in bouquets and also to eat. Hollyhock Vale back here. Oh my goodness, they're tall. And a fenced off portion here. The celosias. See if we can focus. Celosias are starting to form. Isn't that cute? And this is a gorgeous salvia. I'm hoping to have a, a seed for you um, this year. See it's purple and there's white and pink. Let's see if I can get a better close up here of the when they start getting that lovely veining on them. They're just beautiful, beautiful in bouquets. Very textural and uh, lovely blooms. This is the anise hyssop. And it smells like anise, like a licorice. You can see, maybe you can't see, but there are bees and pollinators all over it. And uh, it looks very lovely. It makes a lovely stand. Beautiful straw flowers. They're so gorgeous. They don't look real. Some pretty f uh, phlox, paniculata. And this is the Monarda didyma, the uh, native. That I'm going to try and get a seed crop from for you. And this clematis that has gone absolutely crazy. It's the one called Sweet Autumn, I think it is. And this is a rusty foxglove. Aren't they gorgeous? Those, it's very, very tall. Uh, my clematis is consuming it. <laughs> Anyways, everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful weekend and happy gardening.